Trees are some of the longest lived things on our planet. Some trees can live for thousands of years. Trees come in all shapes and sizes. Despite the differences in sizes, shapes and ages, all trees have important similarities. All trees have roots. The roots grow deep into the soil and draw up the water and nutrients that the tree needs to grow. Here we can see some tree roots exposed to the air by soil erosion. We can see that tree roots form an important network that holds together the soil. Take away the trees and their roots die. Without the strong network of tree roots, the soil can easily be washed away by the rain. Deforestation is the cause of many dangerous landslides after heavy rains in many parts of the world. The roots grow down into the soil from the trunk of the tree. Elephants have trunks too, but you're unlikely to mistake an elephant for a tree. After all, elephants can move. But this is one thing that trees can't do. Elephants move on their legs and their legs support their bodies. Trees don't have legs and it's their trunks that form the strong supporting structure of the tree. Tree trunks are covered in a protective layer called bark. Elephant trunks are covered in skin. We can think of the bark of a tree as its skin. Bark, like skin, provides protection. Bark can have many different textures. Some trees have perfectly smooth bark. Other trees have very rough bark. Some trees even have spiky bark for even greater protection against those creatures, like elephants, that want to eat them. The trunk of a tree supports the branches. The branches branch off from the trunk of the tree and smaller branches branch off from the larger branches or boughs. Sometimes gardeners prune branches from trees if they're growing too big or a branch is damaged. If a branch grows too big, it can snap off in the wind like this one. The bigger branches branch off into smaller branches and eventually branch off into twigs. At the tips of the twigs we find the leaves. Leaves exist for only one purpose. They exist to produce energy for the tree. They do this by converting water and carbon dioxide into sugar and oxygen using the power of the sun. The green of the tree leaves, like the green in all plants, comes from chlorophyll. Chlorophyll molecules absorb the blue and red light from the sun and let the green light bounce off. 
Because chlorophyll absorbs the other colours of light, leaving green to bounce off the leaves, leaves look green. Chlorophyll evolved in tiny, single-celled organisms millions of years before Mother Nature came up with the idea of trees. Chlorophyll has been busily converting water and carbon dioxide into sugar and oxygen using the power of the sun for about three and a half billion years. The process is called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is how the oxygen we need to survive enters the atmosphere. Without the oxygen produced by photosynthesis, you and I could not exist. Depending on the tree's natural habitat, its leaves may be one of many different shapes and sizes. Some trees have broad, flat leaves. Some have long, thin leaves. Some trees, like pines, have needles. Pine needles are tough and waxy and are designed to retain moisture in arid conditions. Palm trees have huge fronds. But leaf, needle or frond, the main purpose is to photosynthesize. The type of leaf a tree possesses depends entirely on the environment in which it evolved. Pines keep their leaves all year because there are not enough nutrients in their environment for them to make new ones regularly. Trees that do not lose their leaves in autumn, like pines, are called evergreens. Trees that do lose their leaves in autumn are deciduous. Though they may look dead in winter, deciduous trees have shed their leaves because there is insufficient sunlight to make them worth keeping. When the leaves fall from the trees, they're brown or red, not green. This is because the tree removes the valuable chlorophyll from the old leaves and stores it until spring. In spring, the deciduous trees grow new, more efficient leaves as the sun once again brightens. If you look closely at the bare branches, you can see the leaf buds waiting to develop into new leaves in spring. Most trees sprout from seeds. Given the opportunity, a tiny seed can grow into a mighty oak. Young trees are called saplings. Saplings grow into trees of all shapes and sizes. These are pine trees and have the shape of lollipops. These are pine trees too, but these are tall and thin. Palm trees grow in very hot environments and can grow surprisingly tall. Some trees are solitary. Other trees form woods. Woods are large areas of many trees. Where there are many hundreds or thousands of trees, we call it a forest. These eucalyptus trees grow very quickly and a forest of eucalyptus can soon establish itself. 
Forests, woods and even solitary trees support a wide range of wildlife, from tiny insects to larger animals like birds. Birds nest in trees, safe from predators. Some, like this great spotted woodpecker, make their nests in the trunks of the trees. Others, like this cormorant, use the trees as vantage points overlooking bodies of water in which they hunt for fish. More exotic birds, like this parrot, feed on the nuts and seeds of many trees. Insects feed on the leaves and flowers of trees too. Bees gather nectar and pollen from flowering trees. Flies range from the tiny to the striking. The leaf litter on the forest floor is home to a thriving community of insects, reptiles, mammals and other animals. Ants collect seeds fallen from the trees. Grasshoppers blend in with the fallen twigs and leaves while they hunt for food. Dragonflies wait to catch passing flies. And birds, almost at the top of the food chain, wait to catch the insects. Trees provide us with not only timber for building and furniture, but also fruit. Seville is famous for its oranges, and lemon trees also abound. Olives grow in abundance too. And all these trees need to be cared for. Forests are managed by foresters or woodsmen. The park next to my house is managed by park keepers. They prune the excess branches from the trees. They also identify and chop down sick or dying trees. Riddled with woodworm, these dead trees could fall at any time. So the dead trees are chopped down and only tree stumps remain. The decaying stumps become food for fungi. Fungi grow on rotting trees, extracting the last of the nutrients. Indeed, fungi will eat anything that has died. Tree stumps eventually rot away thanks to the work of fungi, bacteria and insects. Before they disappear, we can use the stumps to calculate the age of the tree. Every year a tree grows a new layer of bark. By counting the rings from the centre of a tree stump out to the edge, we can count the number of years a tree lived. Trees have been around for about 385 million years, and I for one am very pleased that they exist. I love walking in the parks of Seville. They're a delight to walk in, thanks mainly to the many species of tree that grow in them. Without the trees, the parks would be barren, featureless landscapes from which nobody would derive much pleasure. Let us hope that globally we're sensible enough and can understand their importance enough to treat trees with the respect and reverence that they deserve.